So Joe, in this video presentation, we're gonna look at the SPD. Mm. We know under the 18th edition, these things are becoming more and more commonplace. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously SPD devices were being installed before the 18th edition, yeah. but with the advent of the 18th, it has become a lot more commonplace. It's become a stricter requirement. Uh, what we're not gonna do in this video, however, is get into a debate about do we need a surge protection? Do we not need surge protection? We're not gonna look at the formula involving overhead power lines and the length of underground risk power assessments. lines, risk assessments. We're not, we're not doing that in this video. We're just going to look at the actual device okay. and we're going to look at what is going on inside here. We're going to break it down uh, and look at the components that you find inside uh, the SPDs and just have a chat about what's going on inside there, really. Okay, and we've got a dual module where we've got an SPD in both the line and neutral connections. Correct, correct? yeah, so these are type 2 SPDs, yeah. uh, so we can, uh, we can have a little chat about how they function. Shall we bring the camera in and have a look? Let's do it. Okay then, Joe, so we're going to attempt to open up this Type 2 SPD. We've got two sides to it. We can start with the line conductor side. Uh, yeah, we'll start off with that side. So we'll see what we've got inside here. So here's our uh, line protective SPD. So we're going to have a look at what's going on inside this thing now. Trying to get this out of the case is a little bit tricky because it's got these kind of clips on the plastic outer that's not really designed to be undone but uh, with a little bit of jiggery pokery and the old insertion of a screwdriver hopefully we'll be able to shoehorn this out of here okay so that's that side nope back in again let's go for the old two screwdriver trick See if we can get it out that way. There we go, that's that. Just some light distortion to the plastic casing there. So when we open this up, we can see inside here, we've got this big slab of blue electrical components. So we'll talk about what that is in a moment. On the other side of this, we've got a very simple connection. So we can see that we're taking uh, a feed in from one side, it's passing through this connection, and that's just a little soldered joint there that uh, we'll explain in a moment. And then it passes through the body, connects onto one side of this device, and then the uh, connection can be made at the other side of that. And that's what bridges between the line connection and the earth connection in your installation. So what is that then, Joe? What is that blue component that we can see from above? So this blue component is what's known as a varistor. Uh, so all this is, is a variable resistor. And we think about other isters that we're familiar with. We're familiar with uh, thermistors. So they change their resistance based on the temperature of the device. This is a varistor. And this will change its resistance based on the amount of voltage that is applied to it. So if we were to apply a voltage to this of nominal voltage, 230 volts, then we would see that this has a very, very high resistance value. It's not gonna allow current to pass through it. But if we increase the amount of voltage that we apply to this, what happens inside is that this material's resistance reduces, it gets very small, and then current is allowed to pass through there. So at 230 volts, the impedance offered by the varistor is very high, yep. and therefore nothing is discharged down the protective conductor. Exactly. As we see a transient voltage appear for a short period of time, yep. its resistance will change then, Joe. Yeah, absolutely, and then current will be allowed to flow through here until that high voltage has gone, and then this will drop back uh, to its uh, higher value, and that will mean that it won't allow current to pass through it anymore. The way I think of surge protective devices is they're a bit like uh, a pressure relief valve on a plumbing system. So in a plumbing system, if the pressure becomes too high, the pressure relief valve simply opens and allows water to pass through it until the pressure normalizes. This is a very similar situation. When the uh, voltage that this is connected across becomes too high, even very briefly, it will allow the current, the electricity, to pass through it for a short period, and then uh, it re returns back to its normal value once the pressure has stabilized again. That's a beautiful way of explaining it. Thanks, Joe. So, Joe, when the expiry of the life of the varistor has happened, what's going to happen to the device in order to indicate to us that it has elapsed its life? Yeah, so these things uh, have kind of like uh, 
not a shelf life, but an operational life, if you like. So there'll come a point where this will uh, stop doing what we need it to do. And there'll come a point where its resistance won't drop down anymore after it's taken a number of shots uh, from the uh, higher voltages that it's designed to deal with, and it will stop operating now. Because this is connected between the line and the earth, there's absolutely no way that we could tell just by the operation of the circuit that this had actually uh, reached the end of its operational life. Okay. There's, there's just no way of, of knowing that. The circuit will continue to function perfectly happily until there is then a, a huge transient voltage or a transient voltage enough to damage something. And if this has gone past its operational life, then it will simply uh, not work and it, it will be worse than useless because we think we've got protection when we don't. So what happens at that stage is that uh, this connection here, once this has reached the end of its life, this is just a soldered connection and once this has reached its end of life the uh, voltage across here will start to uh, create heat and that heat will cause this uh, solder to melt which will then simply uh, release this red thing here which is kind of uh, sprung so it's on a spring and when that happens this bit shoots forward and you can see there that on the end of that it says defect and that will appear in that little window there so a visual inspection of this device will tell you that it's reached the end of its operational life. So that's not a very complicated mechanism in order to show you that it's become defective? No not at all it's very very simple. It does have one small disadvantage though and that disadvantage is that you have to physically go and look at the device to see if it's still operational or not. Okay. Now hopefully in a, an environment where there's a very good uh, building manager and that person is going to make sure that they're doing regular checks on their surge protection devices to see if they're still offering protection or not then hopefully we'll be able to see that uh, that, that has happened. However, if this is locked away in a consumer unit or in a distribution board somewhere, there's a possibility it might get overlooked. And again, this surge protective device could quite naturally reach the end of its operational life. It's not faulty, it's just reached the end of its life. And in that case, what we really need is some way of knowing that that has happened. Now that is possible because we've got on the top of our surge protection device here, we've got an auxiliary contact and we can feed a signalling circuit through that. And again, the idea being that when this reaches the end of its life, when this springs forward, this little uh, nib on the back here will also shoot in and it will no longer push down on this little tiny red dot that you can see in the back there. And when that happens, it just operates a micro switch, which will then send a signal through here, explaining uh, to maybe signalling a a remote indicator, maybe a lamp on a panel board, or maybe even an audible signal somewhere, or even into a SCADA system, I would imagine you'd be able to incorporate this as well. Uh, and under those circumstances, uh, we'd then know pretty quickly that the surge protective device had reached the end of its life and needed replacing. Thank you for that clear explanation, Joe. So Joe, the line to earth connection had a varistor in it. Let's yep. see what's between the neutral and earth connection, if you want to try and open that up for me. Yep, absolutely. I'll we'll see if we can get this opened up. So this is the neutral connection and as you can see uh, the casing is almost exactly the same. The only small difference is this pin on the back. So we can't accidentally put this into the line connection because it just simply won't press in because that little triangular section there doesn't line up with that triangular section there. It only lines up with that one so that's the only side it can go in. So we'll take this apart and we'll have a look at what's inside this one. So we'll use the tried and tested method of the two screwdrivers, see if we can get this one undone a little bit more quickly. Okay, as we say, these are not really designed to come apart, so if we can get it apart, that's a bonus. And again, I quite like the fact that it's not easy to take it apart because it means that it doesn't get tampered with or messed around with prior to installation. Okay. Of course, yeah, the other reason we're trying to you know, maintain the actual body of it is we'd like to put it back together as well, wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah, the demonstration kit, yeah. yeah. I think you're close. Feels like it's coming. Feels like it's coming. It's when you get one end undone and then the, the other end slips back in again. It can be a little bit frustrating. There it goes. Lovely. Okay, so once again, we open this up inside, and if we look at this side, you can see no difference so far. It looks almost exactly the same as the other side of the line connection. 
we've got our path through here from the neutral connection through this soldered connection, which is going to behave in exactly the same way as it did on the line uh, protective device. But then when we flip this over, we can see we've got a slightly different element inside here now. So this is a different piece of equipment to what we saw inside our uh, line protective device. So Joe, we can clearly see that's not a varista. So what have we got this time? So this is a piece of equipment referred to as a gas discharge tube. Okay. Or GDT, you'll see this uh, described as in some places. Now, that sounds like quite a complicated bit of kit, a gas discharge tube. But actually, it's almost the same technology as what you'll find in a fluorescent lamp. It's basically just a tube that is filled uh, with a special kind of gas. And again, the idea is that when the voltage applied across here is entirely normal, when it is at 230 volts at its nominal voltage, the current cannot flow across here from the line to the earth connection. Oh, sorry, from the neutral to the earth connection, beg your pardon. So that's quite a, a critical point there. However, just as with a fluorescent light, it needs a high voltage, generally speaking, to get it to strike, to get the current to flow through there. We have a similar situation here. This requires a higher uh, voltage in order to push the electrons, to push the current through this connection here. And therefore, when that happens, and when we have that transient voltage, when we have that spike in voltage, then current is able to flow through here. And again, it's a similar principle to the pressure relief valve in the plumbing system that we spoke about earlier. When that voltage is a little bit too high, current can flow through here. And that allows the system to stabilize. It means that that increase in current doesn't damage the equipment that we've got installed in our installation. And it means that uh, our uh, devices that we've got installed downstream of here will be protected. Once the voltage returns to its normal level, this will then stop the uh, current from flowing through it, and therefore we've got a nice uh, safe connection once more. So in both cases, quite simply designed, very clever technology mm. in order to stop these surges occurring. Absolutely. And once again, we've got the same uh, soldered joint here that will, uh, when this has reached the end of its life, because again, this has uh, an operational life on it. So again, that's important to understand that when this says defect, that doesn't necessarily mean that the equipment's faulty. All it means is that it's reached the end of its life. It's had as many uh, strikes as it can take in terms of uh, the surges within the system. It's had as many shots as it can take. And then when this has reached the end of its life, that soldered joint will disconnect. This will shoot forward, revealing the defect in the window. And again, we've got that same nib on the back there that operates a micro switch inside the uh, base holder here. And you can use that to signal to an external device. Thank you, Joe. See, See you for you your next C-Fix.